I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for today's what's going to be an amazing episode, an amazing conversation. This week's episode, of course, of Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. And my conversation today is going to be with somebody that I have such respect for. He's an internationally known and loved prophetic voice who's extremely accurate, having a track record now of predicting very accurately some major world events. Of course, and in addition to that, prophesying over many, many people about their lives, the Lord's heart for them, their destinies. He's a man who also walks in signs and wonders and miracles and and Holy Spirit pours out wherever he's speaking all over the world and culture is transformed literally. It's my absolute joy and I'm super excited to invite into the conversation with me today, Charlie Champ. Charlie, welcome. Hey, Liz, it's great to be on with you this week. I'm just so excited for our conversation. Okay, I want to dive in, Charlie, and start by asking you, where there's a little bit of controversy creeping in around the subject of supernatural encounters, being able to experience heaven now, having angelic visitations, visitations from Jesus, the cloud of witnesses, experiences in heaven, Um, where some people are maybe a little bit confused about that or wary of that. I would just love to talk to you as somebody who lives that (laughs) and to say, can you help us? What should we expect, you know, from a biblical perspective, what should we expect from our new creation life experience in this regard, really? Well, I believe that, uh, first of all, um, we have passed from the life of death into the Zoe life of God. Yeah. And as a Zoe life, that means that death no longer has its sting on us. And um, according to Hebrews uh, chapter 12, there is a great cloud of witnesses that are around us. And that chapter goes on to tell us that we are, uh, we've come to Mount Zion. Um, not like Mount the mountain that could not be touched, which Moses went up, but a mountain um, that is in a heavenly realm with innumerable company of angels and the just saints made perfect. And also when we look in scripture, we see where Paul uh, said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but one that was caught up into the third heaven and saw things that he wasn't even able to articulate um, with human language, but God revealed things to him um, and he couldn't even tell whether he was in the body or out of the body. So those different passages just lead us to think, Liz, that there is so much more to explore in the heavenly realm. And regardless of what religion wants to uh, do in trying to uh, shape the narrative that we are not able uh, to experience heaven without death, without dying, um, it is very clear through the word of God that heaven is open, that we are able through intimacy with the Holy Spirit uh, to see into the realm of spirits and to encounter um, the things uh, in differently in different heavenly realms. And I'm excited about that. I don't and and I feel like there's a whole generation that is about to go um, on this if I dare say it, a pioneering or an exploration um, of the unseen, like we've never seen before, because they're so hungry, they're so desperate, and out of intimacy, out of this, out of the intimacy for Jesus, um, the doors of his heart are opening to us, and we're going to begin to uh, experience things um, that the saints of old experienced. And I believe that we're going to begin to experience things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and hasn't even entered into our heart, um, the things that God has prepared for us. 
Yeah, I agree. You can see it, can't you? And, and with communications that we get in from all around the world here, and I'm sure you do, and when you're out there with people, there is such a hunger for authenticity, for authentic spiritual relationship, for a real authentic relationship with Jesus. I love that you said it's like the Holy Spirit. It's relationship with Holy Spirit. It's relationship with Jesus, isn't it? That is the door, is the way in. He shows you the realm of his kingdom. When you go, you know, you're going deeper and deeper into that intimate, connected union experience with Jesus, which is the gospel. <laughs> it's like that is the gospel. Christ in us. The hope Come of on. glory, Christ in us now, the ability to have that union, to know the heart of God, to move in the power of his presence all the time, the power of Holy Spirit all the time, and for fruitfulness to be streaming from our lives. You know, and I agree with you. There's just there's a whole new realm of understanding of kingdom reality, I think, that we are on the threshold of now. And the hunger's rising. He's drawing us into him, isn't he, into this new level. Absolutely. And and I, I think too, when we're talking about the cloud of witnesses, and the Bible says that there there is a great company of witnesses that are surrounding us, yeah. that those that went before us have something um a part to play with what we're doing in this day. Um I know for us here in Moravian Falls, uh, there's a rich heritage of the Moravians who prayed a hundred years lit the lamp, um, the menorah of the Lord, had encounters with angels. In fact, um, there's a, a great amount of uh, historical things that have been written about the Moravians where they were encountering angels, having uh, encounters with Jesus, um, face-to-face encounters with the Lord, so much uh, here. And then you just uh, have purchased the house of the Golden Candlestick uh, ladies. And there is so much, uh, you know, information that's been given on uh, about them and just their encounters of walking into, uh, into the heavenly realms, translating into heaven. Uh, seeing futuristic things. I mean, those ladies even saw the flag of Israel, created it before it, Israel was even a nation. There are things um, that uh, have happened with believers before us uh, historically in the church yeah. uh, that I believe that in this time we haven't even tasted or tapped into yet God is offering those to us right now. And I, and I think that's one of the things for us. And I believe for you as well, there is a longing and like this sense of there's much more yeah. uh, than just another meeting or another, like I, and, and I love conferences and I love gatherings and I love meetings and I love all of that, but I feel like there's this draw into a deeper place uh, of, of, of daily, um, daily, dare I say habitation with the spirit of the Lord, uh, yeah. where he is visiting with us and we are entering into Mount Zion. We are experiencing the unseen realm yeah. and I'm excited about it. So am I, Charlie. I mean, I think we're moving into really um, exciting days in the Spirit of God, you know, in, in what's, as the church worldwide, I don't think it's just a few of us. I think this hunger is widespread. And I know I remember when we first got Francis Metcalf's house back where the Golden Candlesticks met every night, six days a week for over 50 years. I mean, that in itself is supernatural where they just worshipped and praised and danced and and then the the kingdom realm opened up in a physical way, as you know. And I remember just uh it's a long story, and I won't go into it all of now. Many of you have heard me share pockets of this story over over the last couple of years, but um it created in me such a hunger, Charlie, such a hunger. So I had the privilege of meeting the only two of the golden candlestick ladies alive now, and they're very, very old. And I had the privilege of spending time with one of them and being able to ask lots of questions, you know, just just to know what they experienced, you know, and, and also before James Maloney went into heaven, um, 
I had time with him and I know that you were friends with him and and he was shared with me some of the stories, you know, what they broke into. So they literally, those of you that aren't aware, they they were a company of the bride and they forerun and interceded for the time I believe that we're in now. But because they gave up all their public ministries at the invitation of Jesus and they just sat at his feet, at the height there were about 80 of them and they lived up in Idlewild in a very hidden way and they just worshipped and loved Jesus. And they began to have physical angels in every single meeting. They would go through a physical door, the door would appear in the house that many of them, including James, saw. They would go into heaven at Jesus' invitation and they would come back sometimes days later and they would be wearing physical jewelry and physical clothing that didn't disappear, that was given to them in heaven. They And I've heard it from the beautiful candlestick lady who I had the privilege of meeting. Um, you know, she said they we would just praise and we would worship and we would dance and Jesus would come and he would dance with us. And this was every single night. And then uh, we would study nations or that she said the candlestick would study nations and then they would be transrelocated to nations and they would just physically go and they would preach and minister in the nations. And then they would physically come back sort of three or four days later, having ha- had continued relationship with the people they served in the nations and and on it goes. I mean, absolutely different realm. And when you read their writings, particularly Francis, they were completely sold out and it just makes you hungry for the more, like you said, Charlie, the pure more, the pure more of knowing Jesus, the pure more of knowing the cloud of witnesses and the angelic and heaven, you know, we're seated with Jesus in heavenly places now, aren't we? The enemy under our feet. We're just tuning into that reality and we're getting better at being seers, I think, tuning in to the experience of where we already are. Uh, absolutely. And, 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 you know, when you look at their lives and just from my conversations with James, this wasn't a conjuring up of um, angel, angelic encounters or even of the cloud of witnesses. Um, this was a holy intimacy yeah. That caused the door or a portal in heaven to open over a geographical location and supernatural um, things began to happen through the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and, and so I think one of the things that we're facing in this hour, uh, a little bit of a pushback, if I might say, about the cloud of witnesses or um, even heavenly uh, you know, journeys is that, well, you, you, you're, you, this is a conjuring up. Absolutely not. This is a positioning for and to the heart of Jesus. And, you know, the Bible talks about how, uh, the Lord in the book of revelation places before us an open door. And then we also look at, um, Matthew 25, where we see these, the the 10 virgins and the five wise ones are constantly filling up their uh, lamps with oil, trimming their wicks, and we see them going through the open door. I believe that there is a, um, a, a separation that's happening in a sense right now um, of the bride of Christ, a, di- a deeper hunger uh, there's people that are watching us even right now that are just like, this is my desire. This is like, that's because you're the bride. There's a hunger for deeper intimacy with Jesus, a hunger for supernatural encounters, um, and a longing uh, to experience a where where we are already seated with Christ in heavenly places, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. We're already there. We're already in Mount Zion. Now it's just God is opening our eyes to see it. We're going to begin to experience it like, like never before. And these like uh, ones, like you said, were forerunners yeah. for the hour that we're living in. Um, and it's just, and, and, and there's, it's like the door of the Lord is wide open right now. And yeah. I don't know about you, Liz, but I feel like um, the scripture out of Isaiah 60, verse eight, who are these who fly like clouds? like doves to their windows or to the open heaven is more real to me. This dove company is more real to me now than it ever has been. And there is people all over the world that are, um, are uh, beginning to push and press into those dimensions 
Yeah, uh, I because agree. that's where they're called to. Yes, absolutely. I agree. The Dove Company. I agree. I I, I know for me, uh, the Lord has been taking me into such a place of hunger for Him, desire for the purity and the authenticity of truly knowing Him, and like simplifying me, and I'm feeling Him doing it with me, and therefore through me for the bride as a sort of barometer for the bride. I can feel the work of the Spirit uncomplicating us, removing the things that are extracurricular, extra-biblical, removing the distractions, removing the compromise, to where, you know, just purify, touching us with purity touching us with the holiness of his presence, coming closer that way. And so that, and just uh, simplifying me down on the inside to just him, desire to know Jesus. And I feel like this is part of the preparation for the fullness of his return. Like we're being made ready in our relationship with him where he is everything. He is everything to our hearts and then he's everything. He's the all in all. And so there's nothing else. And so teaching us the ways of his heart and drawing is deeper. So the re- I really agree with you and I'm feeling it, this hunger and desire and him drawing at the same time and saying, come on, there's a lot more now. There's a lot more. Let go of the old ways. Let m- go of the compromised ways of living. Let go of the distractions. Let go of the things that are not about becoming the fullness of who we are in him and really truly knowing him in the manner in which he desires right and that's in the end that was the the passion that held the nails in place wasn't it was the future with us with his bride so there's a whole new realm about to open up for those of us and i agree it's like this is witnessing for you it's because it's who you are and you're hearing the call of the bridegroom to come away with him again to step through the archway of trust and come up onto the high place with him and begin to see a level of life that I don't, don't think many have, have seen, you know, but they, like people like Francis, they touched into it. They've tasted something uh, that's beyond anything I think I've, I've known about this far. Just amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. amazing. The future's bright, guys. It's bright. It's full of Jesus. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And so, and, 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 and that it's also what people need to understand that it's the spirit of the overcomer and not yeah. the spirit of the escaper. Yes, okay? absolutely. Because, right? We because, win. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, we win. And and I remember Bob Jones talking about uh, many times, you know, about the, the rapture. And he says, well, I get, I get raptured every day. I get caught up every day. I go into trances, visions, ecstatic experiences on a daily basis. And you can see this, like, also there are those that are um, overcomers that are uh that are coming with the authority the power and the glory uh that uh, of the experience that they've had in heaven and then those that are just uh trying to escape like waiting on this quote unquote rapture to happen um because the world is getting darker and um you know we just need to get out of here when in fact when you look at um Isaiah 60 the bible says that were to arise and shine during the darkest of days. And so I I believe one of the things that we're going to begin to experience along with these rapture uh, um, and catching away uh, times is that we're going to come back with greater authority, greater understanding, revelation out of heaven, insights into the mysteries, blueprints uh, for... um, things that God wants to see implemented on the planet, uh, solutions uh, where where the world doesn't know what to do. More than so, like what I've been pressing into, Liz, not necessarily what is going to happen in the future. Like, you know, obviously prophetically, we can see things coming down the line, but I've been asking God, what are some solutions for governments? What are yeah. things uh, that is on your heart, God, the answers um, that you want to see uh, come into the earth for these troubling times to bring the peace of God's presence uh, into nations where there's shakings, where there are there are uh, unstable. There's unstable things that are happening in governments. God, what are some things that you have in heaven that are solutions that we can bring? Uh, the shalom of God 
into the planet and bring the peace and the harmony of of the Lord uh, mm-hmm. that I see and have been sensing and feeling in the in in heaven down. Um, yeah. so that people know that you're real, that you're alive today, that you haven't forsaken them, that they're not here on their own. There is, a, for me, a global awakening that's happening right now. Yeah. It, it, you could see it across the board. There is a heightened sense of spirituality, yeah. but there there needs to be um, those that are like Daniel, mm-hmm. that have the solutions for kings in the planet, and are bringing the presence and yeah. the power of the Lord into the earth. And so yeah. that's what we're here for. Absolutely. Powerful word, Charlie. And it's the truth, isn't it? And you can see like how Daniel walked, set apart, pure of heart, laid down, absolute trust in his king, you know, uncompromising loyalty and a life just completely laid down before the Lord. And I think that's that reverential awe and fear of the Lord is part of the tutor of our hearts right now, you know, to help us to begin to get a, a little bit more understanding of, of the beauty of who God is and the sovereignty of who he is, positioning us to be able to take our position, like you're saying, to co-reign, to partner with the Lord in bringing in the solutions to the issues of the day, bringing kingdom solution on earth through our lives where we can steward positions of influence and impact well because it's not about us anymore uh, we're not we're not feeding our need for significance in the wrong ways anymore we're not insecure and, and so on and so on he's healed us and is healing us sufficiently i think that we can be ones with our hearts laid before him saying you be revealed jesus you are the solution you are life come you know i lay my life down as as your partner to reflect you and to bring your word and so I think it's all interconnected, isn't it, to take our position, to begin to see a shift happen. Because at the end of the day, the earth is his and everything in it. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's creator. He's wrapping up human history in conformity with the counsel of his will. You know, like you said, you know, we win. It's a victorious eschatology, you know, <laughs> to use language like that. But it is. There's no failure in God. He's quite capable of maturing his people and bringing us into position and into the fullness of his dream. You know, that he had before the foundation of the earth, which was a people that would partner with him, right? So I think what's happening now is very exciting. Absolutely. And then also recognizing um, uh, that honor opens that door yeah. for supernatural encounter. It's just like, you know, with Daniel, um, you see Gabriel showing up mm-hmm. uh, and, and really releasing information, revelation, giving insight into what was happening in the heavenly realm to him. It, Daniel, you didn't see Daniel say, oh no, I can't talk to you because you're an angel. Oh, I can't, I can't have this experience. No, he honored that. One of the things that I believe, and this may stretch some people, but I, I believe that there are going to be visitations uh, of, of, of Gabriel coming in a greater measure um, in this season, in this hour, in the, and really this generation, because Gabriel is, in a sense, the keeper of dreams and revelations when we look at Scripture. Mm. And whether it's Daniel or it's Mary, we see Gabriel yeah. showing up in these dreams. And there's something about partnering also with the angelic. The Bible talks about in Hebrews chapter 1 that uh, the angels are sent for the heirs of salvation, not just two, but four. That means there's a partnership there. Uh, yeah. And God is looking who he can send angelic assistance to, uh, to see things that he wants birthed in the earth. And I've been sensing, and I've even talked to um, a couple of different prophets about this. And I said, I really sense uh, that there's going to be more angelic visitation. And specifically, I believe that um, we're going to begin to, uh, some are going to begin to even encounter Gabriel. Yeah. And we've seen that um, uh, with, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the individual uh, angels Buck. on assignment. Yes. Buck. A right, lot of people right. I know are currently reading that book. They felt suddenly mm-hmm. stirred to read it. Of course, Gabriel mm-hmm. visited Roland Buck. Interesting. It, yeah, and I I've been sensing it 
so uh, like in my in my spirit, like this is coming. Yeah. And who was Roland Buck? I mean, really, just a, a man that was seeking God, and and that's what it comes down to. It's not like the who's who in the charismatic zoo. I right. believe that God is raising up the nameless and the faceless, those uh, that are hunger, hungry, desperate for him, that are yeah. hidden ones, and yeah. they're going to have some profound encounters in God. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I'm just sensing this company, I, 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 I've, uh, Liz, that is coming forth right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is the beautiful bride of Jesus yeah. that is uncompromising uh, when it comes to the supernatural, yeah. um, unwavering in their holiness to the Lord. And yeah. uh, they're set apart for him and they don't care what religion has to say. No, they uh, just have eyes for him. hundred yeah. percent, Charlie. I've been living it. This is my, you're talking about my secret life in God right now. <laughs> this is, this is where I've been. I mean, just, going lower and lower and lower and letting holiness touch me and letting and praying for this for the bride all everything that you're saying it's just so right on i'm so excited and encouraged by what you're saying so just just in finishing we just have a few minutes left i wanted to ask you so out of your the secret life of jesus and charlie like what what would you say is the most important ingredient in your relationship that continues to position you for an experiential life with him? Um, if I was going to say anything, I think consistency. Oh, wow. Consistency. Okay. Yeah. Um, in, 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 in that, uh, obvi obviously there are days just being transparent. There are days where you may not necessarily feel like, oh, I'm going to go and pray. But keeping that consistency um, and that holy awe of the Lord and saying, no, I'm going to set this time aside mm. and I'm going to go and uh, spend time with the Lord. Because your natural man is just like, sometimes is like, no, we have other things to do. But right. it's, it's like what the Lord's been speaking to me is slowing down is actually going to bring acceleration and so one of the things that we've been doing here um, at, at, and just with our community is we, we've been opening uh, the building here from 5 to 10 a.m. for people to come and pray. Now, next year, we're going 24 hours. We want to do 24 hours, have this place open for people to come in and experience the Lord. But it's just the consistency of continuing to show up. And it's like when we show up, God uh, 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 always shows up. And, yeah. and so I would say for me, um, creating that space and saying, uh, no matter how I feel in the natural, Lord, I'm going to show up and being consistent in that and, and saying, um, Lord, I'm willing to uh, wait upon you because I don't want just an experience. I want a habitation. Yeah. And I I am I'm going to um I'm going to uh be consistent in 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 waiting on you because when you do come, I want to be someone that you can trust um to to continue. Uh, to allow your presence to move, because I believe God is coming very strong in in the coming days, and He's yeah. looking for places where He can land, like the 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 golden candlestick ladies, like the Moravians. Yeah. Um, God's looking for companies that are going to uh, really make the Lord give the Lord a place for habitation. Absolutely, I can just feel His presence in His heart all the time while you're speaking. It is, it's the, you know, even if there's just two of us or three of us, it's those places where together we just honor his presence and value his presence above all else and love him. And he enjoys being with us. And it is, it's the, it's the place of habitation, isn't it? I mean, we are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit now, but, to, but there's something about us when we're together. He wants to dwell among us as we're together, as, as family, as the bride that's so holy and 
to the other thing that I've felt is Jesus's desire increasingly to share the secrets of his own heart with those that he trusts. And that's an invitation right now for those of us that, you know, we understand our own frailty in this. But what I have been saying in response to Jesus is, yes, Lord, I want that. Make me ready. Make me ready to be, oh, it makes me, just wrecks me. It's nothing more important in life, is there, to be ones that Jesus trusts his heart with where his head can rest, where the one who is government does change the world, is the power of transformation and the solution for everything. He rests his head on the heart of his bride who loves him. It's that simple. It's all flowing from a, a devotion, isn't it? So to me, that what you've just shared, Charlie, there isn't anything more important than asking Holy Spirit right now to help us change our lives to do this, to simplify, to prioritize him and to go to this next level of authenticity and humility and simplicity and truth. Yeah, and it's ministering to him more than doing ministry. Right. Yeah, being priests. Right. Yeah. And finding those people that are that that are like-minded with you. And we uh, we have a really great like for us we have people that are that are really just passionate and are fired up about seeking the Lord and keep, keeping that fire burning yeah. on a consistent basis and saying we we want to make it a habitation yeah. uh, of the oh. presence of the Lord, and I believe there's companies like that arising all over the earth right now. It is. It's what it's what Holy Spirit's doing in our IMC as well in the international mentoring community. Everything is about the bride, about mm -hmm. the preparation of our hearts right now. Same heart, Charlie. It's so encouraging listening to you, and I'm, guys, I'm sure you've been super encouraged as well. We're in a do we're in a new day. We really are in a new day. And everything that we've longed for and hungered for, I think he's going to blow our minds. We're going to have that and some. You know, it's it's just about him. So and I love what you said, Charlie, that it's about ministering to him now. It's just, it's like you go through Song of Solomon, don't you? In the beginning, it's all about the Shulamite, and then it suddenly switches. And so her heart is then suddenly it's all about him. And then she comes out of the wilderness leaning, having learned the wisdom of the surrendered life. And I feel that's where we're at in history's story with Jesus, it's like we're shifting to the level of maturity by his grace where we are leaning and we, it's all about him, knowing his heart and revealing his heart. So yay, amen. Charlie, thank you for giving us your precious time. It's so good to talk to you. Amen. Thanks so much for having me, Liz. I appreciate oh. you. Anytime. We appreciate you too. And guys, thank you for giving us your precious time too. And have the most amazing week with Jesus and praying blessings on your time with him, increase of intimacy and experience of him and look forward to being with you again next week. God bless. Many people know in their head that they're loved, but the experience of God's love hasn't reached their heart. That's why I wrote my most recent book, Loved. It's a 90-day devotional that gives you language to actually escort you into experiencing the love of God, which is the moment where everything changes for us. So I encourage you, pick up a copy of Love Today 